50 degrees inside um, the uh, distilling flask here, the round bottom flask, and uh, water outside the, the bath is around 52 degrees. So uh, we're going to start counting that uh, 15 minutes now. And then as soon as that 15 minute time period, I'm going to check in between to make sure that the, the temperature isn't above 60. Ideally, we want it below that 60. And I've got some cold water there if I need to put into the beaker to chill it, or if I have it ready there. And then um, once that 15 minute time period is over, we will work up um, isolating the different isomers from that nitration. Notice you can probably see that it's very cloudy. There is some solid formation. That's normal. Uh, that means reaction has, is going. Uh, so we'll keep it checked. Uh, the stirring mechanism may not be going great, but it's moving somewhat. So as long as we have some type of stirring going on, I think we should be good as far as the reaction is concerned. It's been 15 minutes, heating around 55 degrees, 50 55. So what we're going to do now, turn off the heat. Uh, so we're, and I'll raise this a little bit so it can cool a little bit more. But we'll let that cool room temperature. We're going to pour the contents of this flask into some cold water and then work with it from there. This is the um, round bottom flask that we did the reaction in. You can see that there's a, quite a bit of solid that's there. There's a little bit of liquid could be some unreacted bromobenzene and also the mixture of nitric acid and sulfuric acid. The stir bar is still in there. I'm going to leave it in there uh, until I pour it into this beaker that has about 40 milliliters of cold water, so that's been chilling. So I'm going to pour this in there, and this is to help uh, kind of get rid of the acid. We're going to filter this by a Buchner funnel and also wash it with a lot more cold water. So I'm going to pour this in including the stir bar itself. I'm going to use a little bit of this chilled water to kind of pour in. To get a spatula too and see if I can get some of that glass traces out. I'm going to use this stirring rod just to kind of break it up into smaller pieces because when we wash this, we want to get rid of as much of that acid as possible. Uh, and when you have these big pieces, there's always some um, impurities, i.e. the acid that will be trapped in there. And I think that's about as good as we can get. It's going to be impossible to get every last trace. much off the stir bar as possible. And I think now what we'll do is take this to the Buchner funnel and then we will uh, wash that with some more water and then we'll go through the uh, fractional crystallization. Uh, just to remind you that whenever you're using the Buchner funnel make sure you have filter paper that uh, covers the holes completely but not creeping up the sides. Um, Always it's a good idea to have some type of container underneath to kind of catch the water just so that it cuts down on splashing. So remember we always have to wet the filter paper with some of our solvent here. Watch, I have some distilled water. Um, so I'm going to turn both faucets on. Typically it's usually the cold water, but since we have a little bit of suction problems, we'll just go ahead and put both of those there. I do notice um, the presence of some bromobenzene. I can smell that in the beaker, so I'm sure there's some that never did react. So we're going to kind of pour this into the beaker funnel. cold water 
just going to wash that. Again, we just want to try to get all that acid or as much of that acid out as we can. Again, notice remove the vacuum tubing before you cut, cut it off. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, we're not getting a weight of this or a melting point. This is crude. So I'm just going to take this and put on some filter paper. And I just want to try to get as much moisture out of here as possible. You can tell certainly there was a significant amount of moisture present there. And I'm just going to do that one more time. Just kind of take the solid. Just try to get as much of that off. This material is not soluble in water, so I want to make sure that when I do the recrystallization, I don't have a lot of water in it because it may not, some things may never dissolve that should. So I'm just going to squeeze that one more time. And just to give you an idea of what it looks like here. And then I'm going to take this, put it in an Erlenmeyer flask, and we'll start the uh, fractional crystallization in just a second.